x squared plus 1 on top of my favorite quadratic, okay? Now, you can see, before you put pen to paper, I've got all my previous working on the board still, right? There is a significant problem with using this for this. What's the significant problem? The, the not, um, power at the top is the same as power at the bottom. Okay, so the fact that I have the same degree on the numerator and denominator, for starters, that, that, looks, that just looks different, right, from, um, from this question. That looks different. Um, why does that cause me problems, though? Like, if, for instance, if, for instance, I'd said, um, I'd said that and changed it, right, it would still work. So just changing the power is not a problem. There's a specific problem here. Um, Brendan, do you want to... When you, um... Uh, the... Very good. Okay, so the specific reason why having the degrees match is a problem with this approach is that when you get to well, when you get to here, right? I've got an x to the one term. I've got an x to the zero term. I've got no x squared terms, and you never will by this particular pair of fractions. So then you think, well, hmm, what 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 can I do? Like this this simplified method, this this way that we just generated. When I said, oh, let's just see if this works, right? Is insufficient to deal with, to cope with a problem like this. So what can I do? How can I bring in an x squared term on the numerator? Yeah, right. No, I don't, I eliminate the x squared term. Oh, you eliminate it? Yeah, you make it, so, you make the numerator so that um, it's like the, the same as the denominator minus something. Ah, okay, it. yes, yes. I am, in fact, you going to do kind of what you're suggesting but in reverse. Um, so what Raph is suggesting is, well, if the x squared plus 1 is a problem, don't deal with the x squared plus 1. Um, don't deal with the x squared at all, in fact. Deal with it as like the opposite of that problem. Try and get the rest of it, okay? Maybe that's a bit unclear to you. It certainly was to me when it first got explained to me that way. I was like, wait, what? And then I saw a question. I'm going to explain it a little bit differently. Minsu, did you want to... Can you put a plus b and c plus d? Uh, yeah, okay. Okay, so another suggestion is... Well, the reason why you're not getting any, um, any x squared terms out of here is because of these guys. They're just constants, right? So when you move to this next line, of course you are not going to get any x squared terms in there because x never gets multiplied by x again. So an alternative would be to say, well, let's stick an x in there, in one of these, right? There's a problem with that, though. We will end up doing things like that later on when we have a look at um, things that can't simply be factorized down into linear factors, at least not linear real factors. Um, but the problem with it is, like the, the shortcoming with it, is when you have a look at this, right? It's like, look, I came from this pair. If I change this question and made it like 2x plus 3 on x minus 1, just as an example, okay? How do I know at this point in the question, without any prior knowledge, how do I know which of these ones is going to have the constant term on it, right? And which one is going to have the x term on it? If I say, well, you don't know, you just have to assume it could be either of them, then you'll end up with something like this. Now, can anyone tell me why this would give us problems? Apart from the fact that it looks gross. I have four unknowns. Four unknowns, and how many equations are you going to get out of them to solve? Not enough. You're not actually going to get enough. There's, there's too many options. There's, there's an infinite number of options, actually. Yeah. Um, we could do long division. I'm going to show you a way which is going to get around that and end up with the same results. Before I show you my way, Aaron, do you want to give one more suggestion? Is it possible to go into complex numbers? You can go into complex numbers, but boy, I'm going to try not to. Because as we know, complex coefficients, they drastically make something much more complicated, which is why they're in complex number land, right? Jinsu, do you want to give one last suggestion? Because yeah. I was going to, yeah? Although that is one painful one. Fraction, you can always find beauty in it by. Oh my <laughs> god. <laughs> <laughs> that was what I said. Okay, alright, alright, so, so, so. This sounds ridiculous, it sounds ridiculous, but I'm going to come back to this guy here. Now we assume, because what I'm searching for is a way to still have, the preserve the simplicity of the method, not go to this disaster, right? But I need to bring in an x squared term. I will tell you the quickest way to do it. Um, you can see I obviously need this pair of fractions. Yes, so I'm, I'm going to begin by writing this. So I've got sum x plus 2, sum x plus 3, 
these two by themselves, no x squared terms. Okay. So the simplest way to do this is to add one. You're like, what? What, what usefulness does that bring to the question? I want to point out two things. Number one, I can do this. I can do this. I, I don't know what a and b are, right? They can be anything. I could have made this two or three or four or five if I wanted. Remember when I gave you that original quartic, right? And I said, can you put this in x squared plus kx as a quadratic in that? I didn't have to. I could have made it x squared minus kx or x squared minus whatever. You can reshape it as any kind of, like you can use, there's an infinite number of polynomial identities out there. You use whichever is simplest and most convenient for you. This is pretty simple. The way I'm going to do it is, a bit messy, I'm just going to go down this way, is that 1, do you agree that 1, is simply x squared plus 5x plus 6 on x squared plus 5x plus 6. Do you agree with that? I want an x squared term, right? There he is, right? Adding 1, the reason why it's useful is, well, I just need to add some kind of constant term, really. Because if I have a constant term, that will enable me to get a quadratic, something of the same degree, up on the numerator. Okay? I could add 2 or 3 or 50, I suppose, but it would just make the maths more awkward. 1 is the simplest one I can choose. Yep. Now, here's the brilliant thing. I don't watch, right? If I have these original um, pair of partial fractions hanging out on the side here, and this is where I'm going to now go to Raph's explanation, right? This guy here is in fact more than what I've got here. So in order to get from here to here, I've got to take away some stuff, right? In fact, the difference between this and this is it looks like it's 5x plus 5 on this. Do you agree with that? That is the discrepancy between this fraction here and where I came from, okay? So therefore, what these guys are going to do is they're not going to add together to become the original. They are going to add together to become the difference, that, right? So this A blah 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 blah, blah is going to turn into this, and that's okay. There will be a next to the one term, and there will be a constant term. So I'm, I'm going to be okay with this. Let's watch it unfold, okay? Um, what I'm going to do is in exactly the same way, I'm going to, let's drop this off. I'm going to say, well, let's whirl these all together into one gigantic fraction so that I can not worry about the denominator and just compare the numerators. Okay, so I'll do that. So that's going to give me an x squared plus 5x plus 6 on the top because it's already in the right denominator. This a is going to turn into ax plus 3. Do you agree with that? And the b will turn into b x plus 2. Yeah. And it's all over this thing. Now, I'm going to do the same thing I did here on this bottom line. I'm going to get all the x squared terms, there's only one of them, all the x terms and all the constant terms, I'm going to gather them together to make the comparison of coefficients straightforward. So it looks to me like, well, x squared terms are already out the front. How many x terms do you see? Five How many? Five plus a plus b. Yeah, I see this guy and this guy and this guy, right? So there are three of them. So I'm going to write the x squared out the front, then I'm going to write, uh, as the kid said, 5 plus a plus b, that's how many x's there are. And in the same way, the constants, let's just label them for the sake of completeness, constant there, um, there's going to be 3a here, and there's going to be 2b there. Do you agree with that once you've expanded it all out? Okay. So again, to indicate that they're actually one unit, I'm going to write them in brackets, 6 plus 3a. Okay, now I'm not even going to go ahead and do the working because at this point I have simply reduced that problem, which was more complex, into this problem, which is exactly the same thing that you did before. 5 plus a plus b, look at the original fraction. What's the coefficient of x in the original fraction? Zero, no x terms, right? So 5 plus a plus b will be zero. What about this? 6 plus 3a plus 2b, that's going to match up to the 1, right? Yeah? No? Yeah? Yes. Yeah. yeah? Okay. So again, it looks a bit more awkward because you've got more like numbers in there, but because you have a constant on the right hand side, it all just comes out the wash. It'll look exactly like this. Can you go ahead and do that? Equation one, five plus a plus b equals zero. Equation two, six plus three a plus two b equals one by comparison of coefficients. Can you go ahead and do that? Get a head start on me and then I will finish writing this up. Okay, so I think because the numbers are quite simple, you might be there. Excuse me. So what I've got now is A and B, I suppose, I mean, what did you do? What was your first step? I just did 
Multiply. Okay, you, I think multiplying, I mean, you generally choose the smallest number you can. Clearly you can multiply by three if you want, but why, why would you? Um, so you double this and then you subtract, I guess you subtract this from this, because then you'll just have A by itself, positive A as well. Okay, um, which of course gives you A as being equal to, I guess, five? five? Yeah. yeah. Um, and then you get negative 10 out of there. Okay, so when you bring that down into our original identity, or the one we introduced at the start, you've got the one, you've got the five, this is a negative. So I'm going to write it like so. Okay, if you wanted to clarify what Raph was saying before and the difference thing, you could, I suppose, write it in this way, that it's one, and then you're taking away these guys, right? You're taking away, you know, just watch the signs there. Uh, I guess I'd write it like this. What I'm saying here is that that part, pair of partial fractions, what it would turn into is this, um, the 5x plus 5 that go into completing the whole thing. So therefore, I have to take them away because they're not really there. Like, I don't actually want them there. Okay? But uh, I, I, th I think this is fine, less negatives and all that. This is just to clarify what's actually happening. Okay? Any questions on that? Can you get, like, one with, like, three? Or we, we will get to those. Um, so I'm going to... Probably not doing that in this lesson because I want to. Yeah, I'm sort of debating what we're going to do for the rest of the. I have some material that I'm going to be printing out. Uh, I'm just going to pause before I let you go for it and just notice again. Like the great thing about this is now, if I gave you that, right? Like this is again the same kind of question where you're like, why, why you do this to me? But if you know how to do this, the question becomes trivial. Uh, it becomes a very, very simple thing indeed. In fact, this is kind of our bridge, we're not doing it now, but it's kind of our bridge from this topic, polynomials, into harder integration in extension 2. What happens as extension 2 students is this sort of circle of functions that you know how to integrate, it widens somewhat dramatically.